Hello lovely people, how are you all doing today? I do hope you're well. Oh, it's another really soggy, dark day in London. I brought my table right into the window to try and nick what very little light there is. It's enough light for me to work by. Hopefully it's enough light for you to see me by. Oh my goodness, so much rain. Um, fortunately, well, as I said, fortunately this time of year, it's not too much of an issue in terms of the garden and me getting on with work, but I kind of would like to. <laughs> I sort of, I'd thought this whole week I could spend a bit of every single day in the garden. No, uh, never mind. There's always, always, always plenty to do indoors. And today I have finally finished the initial sewing of lavender bags. I've got two lots. This is not non-liberty and this is all the liberty. I'll show you a couple as we go along. I mean, let me stack this together like this. I did a count up. It's, it's nearly, although it doesn't look it, there's nearly 50 there. It doesn't look much, does it? That I can't tell you, that is hours and hours and hours of work. It's a crazy amount of work. But it's been gorgeous work. I, I've loved every single second of it. Right, let me start filling as we chat, which on the pile, where did I put my opening seams? There we go. Yeah, firstly, it's been lovely to get back to sewing at all. So, I've got my little bag. Oh, I've got them in the wrong order. I've got my cup scoop. I used that for my porridge this morning. It's washed out. And I'll give it a thorough wash after this because I don't want lavender flavoured porridge in the morning. A friend, um, Amy, hello Amy, a couple of years ago sent me a little book Oh, can't bother to get up. It's a little a little book about cooking with lavender. And I've got to say, it's been a lovely book to sort of browse, really pretty pictures, lovely pictures. But I don't know, I just, to me, lavender is a perfume. I don't want to eat it. Um, yeah, I know lavender cookies are quite popular. So each bag is the top. That's not, because it's quite dark today. Let me show you one with a, a more star. Oh my goodness, I love, I love this one. You know, I'll come on to this probably in a second, but as I was going through, I want to keep them all. So each bag is, oh, this one shows it really clearly. As you can see, there are four different fabrics on the front and then another fabric on the back. Some of them are two fabrics and then two fabrics, as in two different fabrics on the front. So the front is patchworked, the back isn't. Then they are, <laughs> the fronts and the backs are machined together, but then I have this little opening, which my jam funnel, I don't make jam. <laughs> Actually, this is a really useful funnel. Um, I bought this, oh, yonks ago, absolutely yonks ago. This is what I use for, when I'm filling my kilner jars with tomatoes. It's got a nice, <laughs> hello. It's got a really nice wide opening to, so I don't splash my, well, in theory, I don't splash my jars as I'm filling them. I can keep them really, really clean. I don't need to wipe them. I don't need to touch them. It keeps my jars sterile as I put my tomatoes in. Great. And this is from a local shop. And I'll just tell you this, and let's get filling. So anyway, jam funnel into the opening. <laughs> this is a fiddly bit. There we go. And then I'm very, very generous. Two scoops. It's a lot of lavender. I know, I'm generous. I did once check out the price of buying organic lavender. Crikey. I reckon each one of these bags contains about £10 worth of organic lavender. Anyway, yeah, the jam funnel, there's, um, I've got a little local shop, it's a sort of, um, locally we all call it the pound shop, it's not a pound, it's not one of the pound shops, it's a totally independent little shop and things in there cost more than a pound, but anyway, it's one of those shops, it's kind of a bit of everything, they sell like 
daft little bits and bobs of toys for kids. They sell stationery, they sell little bits and bobs for craft crafting. I've just, I'm not concentrating, hang on a sec. They sell bits and bobs of tools and kitchen stuff and well you get the idea i've completely lost this opening now <laughs> i haven't done i haven't done this for two years last year i would have been doing it this time last year in fact i'm doing it now it's almost exactly two years to the date since i last did this um yeah it just didn't happen last year you know for the reasons you know anyway yes back to this little um this little local shop, they sell pretty much everything. And um, I sort of started playing a game with them. I've been using them since I moved into the neighborhood, which is now getting on for 20 years ago. Not in this flat, as in a different flat originally, just across the road. I can see the, the entrance to my old road. <laughs> so yeah, I've been using them for years and I started to play a little game with them of, I, I, I would need something and I think, well, I'm going to go and ask in there first because I bet they won't have it. I'm going to challenge them. Um, <laughs> and I remember going, so I'd go in and I'll, I'll ask for something and I'll say, I bet you don't have any, da, da, da. And then they started saying back to me, I bet we do. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, the jam funnel. I went and looked in their cookery kitchen-ish section. Couldn't see a jam funnel. You know, you can find in there things like, oh, an apple corer or a, a baking tray or oh, I don't know an icing bag nozzle you know the nozzles for when you're icing with a bag I couldn't see a jam for I thought ah, I've got them I've got them at last so I went up to the counter and I said I bet you haven't got any jam funnels and he went yeah we have <laughs> he took me back to the kitchen ish section it was right 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 at the top and there we were, there they, there they were, a whole little collection of jam funnels. I don't think I'm ever, I need to try and invent something that they don't have <laughs> to go in and ask for it. They have thread, as in sewing thread in there, but it's not, it's quite a cheap one. It's not what I would use in, I mean, I wouldn't use it even on my own bits and bobs of sewing around the house. I like to use nice thread. So yes, back to sewing. And it's just been absolutely wonderful. The, 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 just the gentleness of it. The quietness. There is noise involved. Obviously there's the noise of the sewing machine. But it's just that, especially since, because if you remember my, well you might not have been watching that long, but... Oh, it just couldn't have been worse timing. I think it was about the April or May in 2020 when we first went into lockdown and it was a really, really strict lockdown. Like literally everything, everything was shut. And, and that's when my sewing machine decided to pack up the, the, the feed dogs. So if you don't know your sewing machine anatomy, that's, if you imagine, Here's where the needle is coming down all the time, and that's the sort of plate that we sort of run our fabric through. The little kind of they look like they look like the the sort of tractor treads, you know, that you get on a JCB underneath, and they're the things that sort of help to push the cloth through. They've gone they've gone slightly wonky, uh, and they were sort of pulling the fabric to the right or left. Can't remember now. Anyway, that was one thing, but also. Um, it just, I could feel it, it, it was just jarring and, and clunking and it just felt like something was not aligned properly, couldn't work it out and then one day I was sewing and the needle just was snapped and went flying because it obviously wasn't going in the right, anyway at that point I thought that's it, I've got to get this sewing machine looked at. So fortunately at that stage, you know, we were still in a sort of lockdown but some businesses were allowed to open again, including the sewing machine repair shop. So I jumped in a taxi with it to take it there and then came home on the bus and it was the first bus I'd taken, oh, since 
like February or something. So by then I think it was like August or so. I was so scared about getting on the bus and being around people and what have you. But the bus driver was great, uh, insisting on everyone being in a mask. It was mu everything was much more strict back then. Anyway, so back to what I was saying. Since getting the sewing machine back from that, so they serviced it and there, there was, I can't find, I've pressed everything so neatly I can't find the openings. Where are my openings? I've turned the pile around again, haven't I? Let me have my openings facing me. Honestly, Vivi, where are you? There we go. Um, yeah, since having it serviced, oh, it's so much quieter. And it's just got this lovely, gentle chug. It sort of just goes chug, 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 chug. It's just, I love it. It's, it's kind of in the same realms as the sound of trains, that gentle chug of a train that always threatens to send me sound asleep. I'm going to need to refill my bowl in a second. Yeah, so the, 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 the quietness has been absolutely wonderful, the quietness of sewing. The ability to be productive without, sort of, without it being taxing on my bones, like the garden is, or even, you know, be, I'm still quite tired and, you know, thanks, people are telling me I look tired. Thanks. I know. It's because I am. Um, it's not. It's not been taxing. But I, I, the the great thing is I still move quite a lot. So, uh, for example, when I'm sewing them, I will sew the top two patches together for all of them. Bottom two patches. Together for, get all of the top two and the bottom two sewn. Then. I stop sewing, I get up and I'm at the ironing board to press all the seams open and flat so that it just gives a nicer finish. I don't know if you can make out in there. So where the seams are on the inside, they're all pressed open. So I'm standing up to do that pressing. Then I'm ready to sew the bottom two, the bottom two I mean, sorry, to the top two. So then I sit back down, I'm at the sewing machine again, nice and nice and gentle. And when the top and the bottom are sewn together, up I get again, back to the sewing machine to press that now new middle seam open. And then I can sew, sit down at the sewing machine again, pin the backs to the fronts, then sew them, that's all sitting down, then get up again to press them, and now I'm sitting again, down again to fill them. And eventually, when they're all filled, this opening, this final seam, I always finish this by hand. I think it's nice, I, I love to do a bit of hand sewing, and I think an item with a bit of hand sewing it's a much nicer finish than if I was to top stitch it with the machine, because you'd see the stitches, it's ugly, so I always do it by hand. But also by doing that, eventually whoever owns the lavender bag can very simply snip one of the stitches, take that little run of hand stitches out, empty out the lavender when it's lost its flavour in a few years time, and refill it. So in theory, it can last forever. You can just easily pop that seam open, refill it. So yes, it's been lovely to have that kind of the quietness and then that mix of sitting, standing, sitting, standing. So I'm staying active, but it's not, it's not too taxing. I'm taking my time with everything. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just not rushing at anything. Great. But the biggest thing, the biggest thing has been just working with the fabrics. I mean, I, I always say, you know, I'm, I'm an artist and I paint with fabric. Yes, you know, anyone can sew, but when anyone put colours together and patterns together like that, this is what I do. I love it. And I've missed it. I've missed it so much. I hadn't realised how much I missed it until I started getting back to it. And there have been a few times over this last week when, um, not for the Liberty, the Liberty ones are completely Liberty, but there are some more over here where I was making them and then I was looking for backs for them. Uh, so I went to my stash that's in my little glass cabinet over there, which is mostly um, fabric that I've bought 
repurposed, whatever, but it's specifically for bonding. And in that cabinet, I did have a sort out about, I don't know, a few months ago. It might have been last summer, I don't know, ages ago, it doesn't matter. I had a bit of a sort out and I, was, I had all the fabrics out, I had them on the bed, I put a white sheet over the bed so that there's no distraction from the duvet cover. So I put all the fabrics out and start to group them together into little kind of colour and pattern combos for the bonding. And I just love it, honestly. I'm not exaggerating when I say I could literally spend hours quite happily just putting fabrics next to each other to see if they work. It's like, there comes a point though when I say, Vivi, okay, you have to get a sewing now because just playing with the fabrics and looking at them and putting them together ain't earning you a, a dime, as it were. I don't know why I said dime. Um, yes, yeah, so I'd already sorted the, the, the cupboard ages ago. It was months ago. Actually, hang on, I need some more lavender. <laughs> so this is also hours and hours. This is, I've been doing this over the winter. Actually, sort of, I started getting on with this, I think it was in December and into January, where I was starting to feel a bit poorly and not really up to going to the garden and doing all that. So I've been sat on the sofa, stripping, stripping lavender blooms off their stalks smell. I wish we could do scratch and sniff. Oh, a couple of twiggy bits that I missed. They're a bit particular as well. I don't want twiggy bits in there. I've lost my train of thought. Yeah, fabric. Um, yeah, completely lost my train of thought. Doesn't matter. The point is, oh yeah, I was talking about the cabinet. So it's mostly sorted for the bunting, but I'd gone out. Oh, I've really missed a couple of twiggy bits. I need, I need to bring a little bin over here for me twiggy bits. Um, but I've also, I've got all sorts of odds and sods in the, in the, in the fabric cabinet. And, you know, some of them go back years. I'm not a hoarder. I don't sort of just sit on fabric for the sake of it and not sit on it, you know, sit on it over there. It is all for using. It's not for just sort of keeping and being weird about and just keeping. Um, but yeah, there's there's all sorts in there, and there's little bits and bobs I've had from my grandma. There's a, a few little bits and bobs that I've had from Auntie Teapot. Those bits, they won't be used to make anything to sell. They'll be used for something for me to keep. They'll probably go into my own quilt, which is just not happening. Like Ingl English paper piecing quilt, which I haven't touched for, well, years. Anyway, long story short, <laughs> I'm doing a Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> um, yes, I was looking for fabrics for, for these backs. So I went into my stash and, you know, in my mind's eye, I think I know what's in there and I kind of have a really good idea. But as I sort of fished everything out, I, everything out again, and there were some fabrics I'd, I'd completely forgotten about. And as I was putting them out, I was actually physically out loud cooing well not cooing oh i'll tell you about the pigeons in a minute but yeah i sort of going oh oh you're lovely i was talking to the fabric i was telling the fabric you're lovely but they are they're so gorgeous so it has been a delight an absolute delight to get back to one of my absolute loves in life which is painting with fabric and it's got me really 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 excited to start making bunting I've got one big fabric project to do before the bunting though. Um, and just to say with these liberties, oh, I mean I just, I think there are two fabrics, there are two fabric makers, designers that I absolutely, do you know what I need, to, let me fill this, I need to go and get my little bin over here for all these stalky bits. I obviously, <laughs> I was obviously getting tired. Hang on a sec, leave that bag sitting there. Because my bin is just, oh, it's just over here. Oh, la, oh, out. <laughs> That'll do me. Yeah, my two absolute favorite fabrics are Liberty and Tilda. I know some of you will know Tilda. 
particularly those of you who quilt, because I think, is all their fabric quilting weight? I'm not sure, but it's just, it's just so beautiful. I've never, ah, I was about to lie then. I was gonna say, I've never come across a Liberty or a Tilda fabric I don't like. I have got a Liberty fabric here that I didn't like, at least for the lavender bags. Um, my Liberty fabric has come from all sorts of different places and sources and what have you. And I did, I don't know, a couple of years or so ago, it was before lockdown, but I bought a bag of offcuts, unseen, just bought them. And this was one of them. And I, but I don't particularly like, let me show you a bit closer. It's not that kind of typical liberty that we think of like the florals or the paisies anyway so i got to the end of doing all my bags and i still had this scrap so i made myself a new hanky my hem though i don't know if that will pick up can you see my hem there it's about it's about four millimeters wide on my actual shop bought liberty hankies the hem it's about two millimeters wide it's tiny and i was trying to get it tiny but i couldn't anyway and also trying to cut a square on a table that's not big enough to cut a square I cut it in the kitchen in the end but yeah brand new hanky hooray <laughs> brilliant um yeah so there we go look look I think this I think this was the last bag that I um, processed and I think I must have been getting a bit tired. Don't worry, you're not going to get sticks in your lavender bags. Just a quick word as well. I know a few folk have been asking. I've had quite a lot of people messaging me to pre-order and I've had to say the same to everyone. I'm not taking pre-orders just because I think actually I've had more pre-orders then I've got lavender bags. So yeah, I'm really sorry to disappoint people, but it's it's only fair to just do it, at the, you know, everyone gets the same chance at the same time. Um, and when, when I do put them on sale, I'll put a little announcement on Facebook and Instagram, because I know some people aren't on Facebook. So yeah, just, it's, you can tell it makes me giddy, <laughs> quite giddy. Ah, oh, yes, so I'll get these done. I'll get them all filled today and I'll start the hand sewing. I mean, it, it will take a while. When will you see this video? Hopefully you're gonna be seeing this video on Friday, I think. I'm aiming, I'm aiming. I'm gonna try and get them into the shop on Sunday. Um, I need to itch me schnozzle. I'm going to just use my, ooh, my brand new Liberty hanky. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll aim to get them in the shop on Sunday, but like I said, I'm, please don't hold me to it and don't get cross with me if I don't get it done by then. Um, it's a case of trying to, I think probably if I took a whole day out, I could probably get them all sewn in a day. I'd get them sewn in a day. Of course I would. Oh, that's not the bin, that's my bin. It's just that obviously there are still, there are other things to do, of course. Anyway, yes, so I'll get the Liberty bags done. Um, once they're all stitched up and I've got them all piled up, I won't want to sell any of them because I adore every single one of them. I mean, literally every one of them, the fabric, the patterns, and then look at the backing for this one. It's a completely different one. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Yeah, I won't want to sell a single one of them. I haven't made one for myself. <laughs> I might do though. I might, oh, I don't know. There's there's one in here that's, a, it's such a favorite. So, you know, I was just saying when I, I sew the top two patches together, and then I press them to press the seam open. So obviously I'm pressing on the back on the seam, but then I flip them so I'm, seeing, I'm on the pattern side just to press that seam one more time. And when I was flipping them, I was like, oh, I can't bear to part with you, you're too gorgeous. And I have actually got in my stash, I've got it, I was thinking about a hanky from it. 
it's not big enough though it's only about this deep it'll be deep enough for the backs of a bag and it's about a meter and a half long it's so beautiful it's i just it makes my knees go wobbly when i look at it and i decide you know what i'm keeping it that's for me i don't know what i will make of it like i said it's too I could make a hanky, but it would have a seam across the middle. And would that bother me when I'm blowing my nose? Probably. So, yeah, I don't know what it's going to be, but it's it's staying here with me. <laughs> oh, dear, I'm so selfish. I need some more lavender. Then, once the lavender bags are done, um, what I'm really, really looking forward to doing in the rest of March... I'm trying to juggle. I'm trying to juggle quite a few things again. Ah, I'm back to the. Um, hang on a tip. I don't want to spill any. This is what I mean. I'm, I feel like I'm sitting on a gold mine of. Um, hang on, tappy tap, bang bang. I feel like I'm sitting on a gold mine of lavender blooms. And I have to say as well, I have to say a big, big thank you to Gary. Some of you will have seen him in my videos. He's one of my plot friends. He's an outside of the plot friend as well. Um, actually, it's funny because there's a little cafe. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but it's two doors down from where I live. So when I come out of my house, if I'm going off to the post office, I walk past this little cafe. And I've lost count of the number of times that I'll see one of my friends in the window. Um, and, and more often than not, I see Gary. So we have a little wave and I'll pop in to say a quick hello. I end up sitting down with him having a right old gas bag for an hour. That's why I never have time. My time always runs short. It's because Gary always stops me and gas bags to me in the nicest possible way. Um, yes, so I have to say thank you to Gary for his... Uh, lavender some of this has come from his garden we've we've developed a wonderful prid quid quid pro quo prid quo quid pro quid pro quo <laughs> you know what I mean anyway we've developed that he loves having the lavender in the garden he loves it for the bees loves to brush his hand over it and smell it what have you what have you but he absolutely hates, hates harvesting it and dealing with it, you know, towards the end of the summer. He hates pruning his lavender bushes. He hates trimming them, shaping them, caring for them. He hates all of that. He just likes the smell and the bees. So this is a perfect relationship we've developed. You know, the first three bushes I love, but after a while I kind of hate no I don't hate anyway the point is I am happy to spend hours in his garden sitting amongst his lavender harvesting and then pruning and shaping his bushes for the following year I'm more than happy to do that in exchange for the harvest so you know what we we both win brilliant what was doing oh yeah so the next right yeah I was talking about juggling <clears throat> This is that thing of, of it's using hands and talking at the same time. Lose the train of thought. Juggling. Juggle, juggle, juggle. So, now, as we go into March, well, we're in March now, aren't we? Um, oh, I think I overfilled that one. Oh, yeah. That's no, because there's a twig in the way. Obviously, the garden is going to start taking up more time. Great happy to be back in the garden seed sowing at home seed tending at home well there's one seed to sow this month i'll be getting on with that in a few days i'll bring you along for that otherwise at home in march there's not much to do by way of seeds in the garden lots more in april but yeah so the garden is going to be taking off my sowing is taking off again um <coughs> I've still got some admin -y responsibilities, you know, to do whatever things ongoing. But I now want the priority to be the garden and the sewing. And <laughs> uh, 
just getting the house sorted for selling. Now, it's possible that this whole thing is gonna be delayed. I was hoping that I could put the flat on the market in May and, you know, be ready to be off. However, I mentioned it a few times last year, this issue with the lease for my property, it still hasn't been resolved. Oh God, I handed over thousands of pounds back in August last year. It's still not resolved. I can't put my flat on the market until it is resolved. I don't know how long it's gonna take. Um, I have got a legal person onto it. We're on it. So that's that could delay things massively. Um, also, for selling, I do need to decorate the kitchen. I know it doesn't look it in videos, but it's really grubby and worn and, you know, it's not going to sell the flat for me, put it this way. It might kind of put someone off a bit. I don't want anything to put anyone off. There are all sorts of little snagging things I need to do. Out in the hallway on my little half, there's, as I go up my front door, I go down, I think it's about eight or nine steps. There's a half landing and then I go down another about 12, 14 steps down to the next flat. Uh, on that half landing above it, the roof slopes, because I'm in the attic, and there's a big skylight. And when the roof failed, the whole roof's been replaced. That was about six years ago. Thank goodness that's while I was still working to pay for that. Um, the skylight also had to be replaced because it was, it was the old Victorian skylight. It was leaking. It was ridiculous. So it was all replaced. Great and watertight. But all around it, it had to be replastered. So out there, it's still bare plaster. I haven't decorated, it's ridiculous. Um, I've got a set of ladders now, so I can get up there, but it just keeps being, it's typical with me, it's like time. When am I gonna find time to decorate? So that needs doing. And I, so, I suddenly feel a little bit, I don't feel overwhelmed and I don't feel panicky. I do feel quite warm, hang on a minute. I had the heating on for an hour this morning just to take the edge off the cold. <sighs> I try not to put the heating on otherwise. Yeah, it's not, it's not panic, it's not overwhelmed, but there is a sense of <clears throat> <clears throat> lavender dust in my throat, <clears> throat> excuse me. Things gathering pace, gathering momentum, and the things are gathering pace and gathering momentum faster than me. And that's me talking about wanting to go slowly. Da, da, da. Um, oh, I've just flung lavender all over the table. So, yeah, I think. I, look, it's something that's on my mind, and I'm thinking about that I may have to postpone things, postpone moving. It's going to happen. It is definitely going to happen. It has to happen. I have to get away from the stairs. But I'm in a position where, um, you know, time, I'm free to do it whenever I want. There's no, because I don't have a mortgage on my flat anymore. I paid that off all those years ago. It's not like I've got a mortgage coming to the end and I have to remortgage which is the situation, you know, the chaps are in, as you know by now. Um, so there's no time pressure on me to move now or by the summer. No time pressures whatsoever. So this has been something I've been thinking about. I thought about it quite a bit while I was in hospital as well, because when I was just lying there thinking, oh, this is great, I'm just lying in bed and someone's bringing me food. Can I stay? Can I stay for a couple of months? It was like a spa retreat, honestly. I'm so thankful. Anyway, yeah, I was thinking about it back then because a lot of the stuff that I'd hoped to do over the winter in terms of stuff on the flat just didn't happen because I was feeling rubbish, you know? I'm not going to be up and down ladders and moving furniture out of the kitchen and all that stuff when I was feeling so rubbish. So <clears throat> by the time I ended up in hospital, 
I was already, according to my schedule of works, I was already three months behind where I wanted to be, to be on track for selling the flat. And it was at that point I thought, you know what, it's good to have, I think it's good to have a time scale, it's good to have a time goal, but if it's, if it looks impossible, I am not, I am absolutely not going to put myself under pressure to move by a certain date if that pressure means I end up working 18 hours a day, seven days a week again, which is what I was doing last year. And I can't, I just can't do that anymore, you know. I've got to look after myself. I don't mind working 12, 14 hours a day, six days a week, but I'm not doing I'm not doing those long days every single day without a break. I'm not doing that ever again. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's a very long-winded way. Oh, I wonder if the lavender's making my nose itch. <laughs> See, I'm itching my nose with my hanky <laughs> so that I'm not touching your lavender bag. With, oh, that's so itchy. Uh, by the way, yes, one of the things I'm gonna be looking into is having some allergy testing done. It's all, it's all scheduled, it's all happening. Yeah, it, that, that's a very long roundabout, long-winded way of saying, um, I know everyone is really, really supportive of me moving and everyone's really keen for it to happen. And actually, I know a load of you are really excited for it to happen because you know what, let's face it, finding a new place and decorating and making a new home, it is really exciting. It is, I can't wait. I mean, I'm scared, I'm daunted, da, 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 but it will be brilliant. I can't wait, but I can wait if it means, if it means not putting myself under a huge amount of pressure. So yeah, there we go. Um, for anyone wondering what's, what stage I'm at with moving, that's exactly where I'm at. I will try um, whoop, I haven't given up on the idea of moving this year. I haven't, I'm not saying that definitely, I was going to hoover this morning and then I suddenly thought, don't bother hoovering Vivi because you're going to make a mess with this lavender and I am. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm definitely not moving this year and doing it next year instead. I'm not saying anything for definite other than yes, I will move. And in the meantime, I will carry on sewing and gardening and YouTubing. That's my three main jobs. And my shop, of course, my shop. Those four jobs, they're my main jobs, they will carry on and they'll get a lot of focus. But I will also, in the meantime, I will start trying to get on with all those little snagging jobs I was mentioning, my snagging list. Um, Ah oh, yes, yeah, so that's it. So the the so la all around the houses. I haven't even talked about half the stuff I thought I was going to talk about this morning, and I think I've probably been talking long enough to start to think about being quiet for a minute, or longer than a minute. Get the lavender bags done, and then you'd think, oh, she'll be moving on to bunting next. No, I've got. I'm going to open a whole new department in my shop. By the way, with the shop, because I'm always getting asked, the link to it, whenever there's a video, if you look under the title, there'll, there'll be a description of what my video is about. I'll say, you know, today I'm in the garden, blah, blah, blah. And then it says more info. In the more info bit are the links to all my other stuff, so my Instagram, the Facebook, and the shop. So it's always there, and the shop is always open. I did try to find out a way to um, close the shop because when I was in hospital, I was kind of, I was worrying because I knew I had an order and I ha it came in just before I went into hospital and I didn't complete it before I went into hospital. And it was on my mind the whole time I was in hospital. Yeah. <clears throat> I got it sorted through various means, it's okay. But I thought, oh, I wonder if there's a, a, a button, a setting, that I can press to just make the shop go off. Like I don't, I don't lose all my stock and my settings and descriptions and photos and all that stuff, but it just makes it go blank and it takes it off the website. 
for a while so that for instance if if I ever had a holiday again if ever I was off doing something else for a couple of weeks you wouldn't be able to go into the shop and order something and then be disappointed because your order doesn't get dealt with that day haven't found that button yes so another department for the shop <gasps> I'm really excited about this it's going to be a Mm, how to put it, a vintage, I need to think of a name for this section of the shop, a vintage sort of sewing and haberdashery section. So everything in it, I mean I've got some craft books, I have a craft sewing section in the bookshop, part of the shop anyway, and there are some, like when I say vintage, I'm talking like more than 30 years old, actually I've got a load of little crafting books I've just put in which are from they range from the 40s through to the 60s. So for this sewing and haberdashery section, it will be a mixture of books and stuff. So um, I've got some, I've got a couple of lovely little needle cases. I've got a lovely old school darning mushroom. Hands up who's got a darning mushroom in their stash. Hands up who doesn't know what a darning mushroom is. Shall I show you? Let me show you, in case you don't know what a darning mushroom is. Oh, <laughs> at least this makes me move. Ow. <laughs> That's the problem if I've been sitting still for a while. <clears throat> this, oh, blah. Yeah, this is because I was in the garden yesterday. This is, I'm filming this the day after I was in the garden and I filmed my thoughts on video. So that was the day I was, Stimming, trimming, and gathering, uh, and it's yeah, it's left me quite stiff. But I thought it would. And one of the other things I've been thinking about in terms of looking after myself and the way I plan and do things is that even a morning in the garden, if it's quite standy uppy stuff, it'd be different if I was sitting down. But if it's quite standy up, move around stuff, it does leave me the next day quite stiff and sore. So I just have to alternate: garden day, sewing day, garden day, sewing day. What a great life. Anyway, yes, darning mushroom. That, isn't it cute? That is so sweet. I love a little bit of naive art. That is a darning mushroom. So that if you're darning your pair of socks, for example, you basically shove the mushroom up into the sock. So the hole, the area where the hole is, is over the top of the mushroom. And then you sort of gather the rest under here and hold it and it just keeps the shape of the hole in place so that as you're darning you can basically have I just said basically twice that's so annoying sorry you can basically <laughs> it keeps the tension so your darning stitches you hopefully have them under the same tension as whatever the garment is that you're darning darning mushroom it's a darling darling mushroom that's so cute. Anyway, yes, yeah, so there will be books in the vintage sewing shop. There will be some, I've got a handful of patterns. They're not that old. They're from the 90s from a magazine called Prima. Did any of you used to get Prima? I've had them for ages and I thought, you know what? They can go in the shop. I don't need them. I'm not going to make them. One of them is for a lovely little sort of Regency style wedding dress really cute so they'll be in there so books patterns items like that but what I'm really 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 excited about as well is and again I've I've had my own collection for the longest time I'm not getting rid of my entire collection because I've got all sorts of other creative ideas to make in time some things that I've talked about before that I'm finally actually going to get on with and get on with doing, including my journal book covers. Uh, so I won't be getting rid of my entire stash, but I have a huge stash of things like, oh, lace and ribbon and sort of tatting trimmings, the sort of trimmings you might use, broad anglaise trimmings, all sorts of things. So what I need to do, sorry, <laughs> scratching me off a like a monkey, sorry. Um, uh, it's one of my, I think I've got it on my jobs list for next week. 
for example, with all the lace and the ribbons, etc., etc., I need to measure the lengths of everything, and I'll just be selling by the metre. Some things I've got, I might have five or six metres of. So it'll go into the shop, I'll be selling it, the price will be per metre, but if there are six metres, I will put in the back end of the shop, in terms of quantity, stock quantity, I'll write six. So if you want two metres, you can buy two metres, and then my stock quantity will drop to four. So if someone wants to buy four metres, they can buy the remainder of the stock. So that's sort of ribbons, laces, trimmings, what have you. I might be doing some buttons, but I've got other ideas for them. But one of the things, the thing that I'm really, really excited about is I'm going to make up packs. Oh, hang on, we need some more lavender. Did I empty that bag? Yeah. I'm going to make up packs, which fabrics. Oh, la la, I've lost my peg. I'll fix that in a second. And they will be for people who are into scrapbooking, patching, being creative in whatever way with vintage fabrics. It's going to be a whole, each pack will be a selection from both my own stash and bits and pieces that other people have given me. Remember Kate from last Homely House gave me a whole lot of stuff, oh gosh, 18 months or so ago now. And we were selling everything from Macmillan, brilliant. And there were some bits which were a bit too damaged to sell as they were, some bits which were really, really, there was a really beautiful piece, but it'd be massively like, mass in the middle, just a massive hole cut out. So what I'll be doing is cutting pieces up, so each pack, I'm, I have to see, but I'm hoping that each pack will have at least a couple of the equivalent of fat quarters of a, a vintage linen that's embroidered. So each pack will have an embroidered piece in it, each pack will have, say, a lacy piece in it. Different different sort of tech, embroidery, pull thread work, lace, um, cut work, that sort of thing. All these different styles in the vintage fabrics. Hopefully a little bit of everything in each pack. And then you can use it to make whatever on earth you want from it. So, um, when I'm, when I, oh, hold on, noisy again. As I start to do that more, as I start to get into it, I might just do a little video to show you what I'm up to so you can get an idea because I think it's a bit tricky to tell from what I'm saying exactly what I'm thinking of doing. But each pack, each pack itself, the plan for it is, will, so it's going to be a bit of a lucky dip. I'm not going to photograph every single pack because they'll all be slightly different. Um, if 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 a colourway in embroidery is predominantly blue, or if it's predominantly pink, I'll say so, you know, pinks or blues, what have you. But yeah, it'll be a bit of a lucky dip. And to make it um, a little bit more lucky dip, and again, appeal to, you know, scrapbookers, journalers, you know who you are. I'm thinking that each pack will be put together, it will be sewn into its own bag, but the bag that it's sewn into, will, paper, will be some, there'll be a little vintage element to the paper as well. So for example, your pack may be sewn into a vintage sewing pattern. It may be sewn into a vintage map. The paper itself will be something that you can cut up and use in some way for your own little creations. I've also got, there's a few bits and pieces. I don't know if it's enough to put in to these fabric packs I'm thinking of, but I've got a few bits and bobs of notions by way of, you know, things like press studs, poppers, um, little packs, really old packs of needles. Some of them are more than half used. But I love it. I, I know some of them are a bit crumpled and crushed, but I love it. It's the kind of, um, you know, it's, it's the brands and makes that some of them have disappeared. But as soon as you see the brand, you'll go, oh, yeah, I remember that. That was in my mum's sewing box, for instance. Um, 
and, and they're so, to me, they're really iconic. They're really iconic sewing bits. So they might, I might try and put a little bit of something like that into each Lucky Dip bag. <laughs> or I might do those separately. I'll see. I'll see when I get there. I also have a really large collection of embroidery silks. <sighs> you can tell that I've been... Uh, I've loved, I've loved fabrics and all things sewing my whole life. I did do, when I was doing my first degree, I did a combined degree, I was doing art and theatre, drama. And the art side of my degree was textiles. So <laughs> it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I also painted. We all had to paint. If you do a degree in art, you have to paint and you have to go to your still life classes. I hated going to still life. I wanted to sculpt and be on my big loom making crazy statement pieces about the environment, even back then. Yes, so, I have the most wonderful stash. I can't wait to delve into it. I can't wait to put things together um, to bring to you in the shop. And like I said, I think at some point when I'm, when I'm doing some of it, I might turn the camera on as well. Got lavender in my mouth. What did I say about not eating lavender? For, um, because I think you might enjoy just seeing the pieces, even if it's not something you might want to buy. Um, and I had, and I had to say thank you to Kate as well. I had a bit of a chat with her. I don't know when it was. Was it before Christmas, Kate? I can't remember. Um, because I was having this idea about these sort of vintage packs of of fabrics, embroidery, you know, these vintage linen, what should I call them? I don't know, vintage linen packs, um, to, to, to use pieces that are too damaged to, to use as a tablecloth, for example. Um, and I was just chatting and I said, do you think that's a good idea? And she said, yes, absolutely. And then she was telling me that she'd done something similar years ago, years and years and years ago, not the same, similar, um, and that it, it had worked really well, way long, long, long before, you know, long before she's on YouTube and, and doing stuff through her online shop, way, way, way before that. But yeah, so that was quite, I was, I was pleased to hear that sort of reassurance from Kate. You all may think it's a stupid idea and they may not sell. I hope they do. I just, I just think all these things, they're too, they're too, they had so much work put into them at some point. They're too beautiful to just be thrown away. And, you know, I am going to be keeping a whole lot and using it for other stuff. But I've got to the stage where I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm ne <laughs> if I live another 50 years, I probably won't use it all. Because I keep gathering more. <laughs> I can't resist it. You know, if I'm, um, if I'm in a charity shop or something and I see a little sad packet of buttons... <laughs> I have to have them, you know, with, with the thought that they'll be used another day. Right, I'm just looking at the clock and oh my giddy goodness, I have, I have proper burbled on. But you know, it's nice to just, you know what, it's nice to hang out together, isn't it? And I'm, I'm cracking on with this. I'm still on the Liberty bags. Uh, and then I'll move on to... Let me, I'm going to show you a couple of the non-Liberty bags. The Liberty bags are going to be more expensive, just as a heads up. They're probably going to be around £14. I know it seems like so much money, doesn't it? But the fabric, first of all, costs. But if you think about the hours and hours of work in each bag, all the love that goes into every bag, there's so much love in each bag, really, truly. Um, you know, the plants have to be grown and tended and looked after. The plants have to be harvested, the harvest has to be hung to dry, the dry harvest has to then be processed so that I get to this stage, the bags themselves made and filled and there's going to be hours now of sewing as I sew up each little bag. It is a joy and, and I, hope, I hope that whoever ends up with any of them, I hope you get, it's going to sound like a right old hippie dip now aren't I, but that sense of joy and love that I have for the process. That's all in here. It's all in here. So when you get your bag, you're not just getting a lavender bag. You're getting my joy and my love. 
Told you I was a bit hippie. Right, so, oh my goodness, uh, anyway, let me show you, oh, I love it. Just roses and spots. Who doesn't love a rose and a spot and a rosy background? When I'm holding it up, it's too light there, but, oh, I love this one. <laughs> I made some bunting with these two fabrics. I had a little tiny bit left over. I think I've got three in this design. This is bicycles and butterflies, and the colour is going to be so washed out because of the light. But yay! <laughs> or, there we go, that's a bit better. It's a bit strong. Obviously, when I photograph them, you'll see them better. And then I, I did a bunting with those lovely zesty lemons. Tiniest, tiniest bit of that was left over. Again, the light will be better. I even love the back fabric. The light will be better when I um, photograph them. Oh, and this one, I just love this. This is so, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I had this bit of fabric for a while. I was thinking, what can I use it for? It's got flamingos on it. Look, can you see? Uh, flamingos and roses, because everybody needs a lavender bag with flamingos and roses on, don't they? Brilliant, right. So, gosh, I've still got all, right, I've got a lot to do still. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more Liberty bags to fill. There, that's 16, I've, so that's 26 to do, which means I've done 24, I'm halfway nearly. Let's do one more. And then I'm halfway uh, and we can wrap up. Oh, I said at the beginning that I was cooing over the fabric and then I mentioned pigeons and I said I'd mention it later. <sighs> pigeons. I um, Just behind you where my window is, where the eaves come down, there's a big box gutter and then the parapet wall at the front of the building. In that big box gutter, Underneath my window, there's a tunnel under my window to allow that box gutter to pass through. That's where the pigeons like to go and make out. <laughs> They're getting randy. Oh my goodness. And I need to remember to block it up. Um, I, I didn't get it blocked in time. Was it two years ago? And they blimmin' nested in there. And then I couldn't block it up because there were two chicks in there. And obviously I'm not going to block the chicks in. <clears throat> Forlorn, scraggly look. As they kind of, as they got a bit more adventurous, they'd wander out from underneath the tunnel into the gutter. And they look, oh, they are, they are ugly babies. I'm sorry, pigeon mamas. Your babies are ugly. <laughs> so ugly. Anyway, um, yeah, I've got some chicken wire down at the garden. I need to remember to cut a bit off bring it back so I can, the, the entrance to the tunnel, as it were, it's only about, it's about that big. So I need to just, if we're sideways on, that's the entry into to the tunnel. I need to put a bit of chicken wire mesh like that, but I may, might need to make it go up and then come across and down so that it's, it sort of forms its own wedge. Because I tell you what, when it's five o'clock in the morning, and I don't sleep great anyway. I usually wake up two, three, four times between sort of 11 o'clock when I go to bed, midnight, and sort of four or five in the morning. And it's usually around four or five that I finally go to sleep and go to sleep properly. And that's when they start kicking off with their cool, 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 look at me, aren't I cute? Cool, I'm so handsome, cool, cool. They're so loud, <laughs> they're so loud. So it, it started again about three days or so ago. I was in bed. I was like, oh, they started. So I, leave, I rolled over in bed and I banged on the eaves of the roof, hoping that would kind of just scare them off a bit. It didn't, so I got out of bed and I thumped on my windowsill, which is over the tunnel, and the cooing stopped and then I was like, ooh, so I thumped again, and they sort of half waddled out, all nonchalant, so I opened the window and I flapped the window, <laughs> just, just frightened them off just enough to go away. I don't want to harm them, I just don't want them making out in my gutter. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, so on that note, Randy Pigeons, we're off. <laughs> I will see you, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll see you all again really soon. Oh my goodness, I've looked at the clock, I've been talking for ages. Um... There we go. Sometimes it's just nice to do nothing and chat, isn't it? Uh, what's coming next? Hopefully, uh, I'll get back to the garden. 
I think in three days we're going to have a clear day. So I think what we'll do is we'll do a tour. Yeah, let's have a tour. Um, I haven't. It's only been about three weeks because the February tour was late. So it's only about three weeks. So there's not a huge change, but we'll do it anyway. Check out all the changes, any changes, but also, as I mentioned in the previous vid, look at what's planned for each bed this year. Yay. All right then, so for now, I'm gonna say cheerio to you all. I'm not gonna waste those. I'm gonna say cheerio to you all. Happy rainy day projects. Uh, I know, oh my goodness, I know some of you are snowed in still, aren't you? Well, not snowed in per se, but too much snow to be doing anything in the garden. So I hope your indoor projects are coming along wonderfully. I hope you're enjoying that. I hope you're not fed up of being indoors um, yet. Oh, just quickly as well. No, I'll leave this for another day. I'll leave it for another day. There's plenty to talk about another day. Yes, stay well, be well, stay well, get well, whatever it is. Let's be well somehow. See you all again really soon. But until then, bye for now. Cheerio, lovelies.